Hey, this is D-Night. This is Carol. <laughs> we, we also have a third person. I'm not sure what happened. She forgot her line. <laughs> no. no, you guys said it at the same time. That's what I was laughing at. I think oh, you're I think experiencing you a lag. Yeah, I think you froze there. And that's Ty, and you're listening to the Part of the Insurrection podcast, <laughs> where we don't get in fights with the staff at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, you didn't ask me if I did. I haven't, but <laughs> I mean, I guess anything <laughs> anything's possible. Ty, I know you from a uh, military family, so I guess it's possible you visited Arlington and got into a little brouhaha with the staff there over, you know, taking things to the ground. I have been to Arlington Cemetery, and I did not verbally assault nor physically assault a staff member. Kudos to you for. Um, you know, Did you being... imply in any way that um, anyone buried there was a loser and or sucker? No, I did not do that either. And I did witness a wreath laying ceremony that was, um, I was a Congressional Youth Leadership Scholar. It was a trip to Washington and one of the girls in my group, her father died in Vietnam and she never got to meet him and they let her participate in the wreath laying ceremony. And that's the first time I'd see it at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And I was only 17 years old, but it was absolutely moving. And that was my first experiencing, experience witnessing that. And it was so nice. So I always have that burned in my brain of that's what that ceremony should look like. You know what I mean? That type of respect, that kind of Solomon. None of us knew her. We were from all over the country, but we all paid the same respect and realized what a moment that was for her to get to be a part of, you know, that. So. Yeah, it's not a moment to pose for Instagram. Like. No, even if there was an Instagram, I wouldn't have done it. I didn't even do that without Instagram. There, no one was like, hey, get out that disposable 35 millimeter. No. no that's, oh, hey. That's that. not- Speaking of uh, being appropriately um, taking the situation, we should mention our sponsor, Colin. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sheets, Sheets and, and Giggles. Giggles. Hit up sheetsandgiggles.com. Get you some sheets. I got By some. Sheets. He supports democracy and they're, uh, they're e- e- environmentally friendly and sustainable yes they're sustainable sheets they're comfortable as all get out yeah they're on my bed right now they've been on there for two weeks i need to take them off and wash them but i don't want to put the other sheets on there while they're in the yeah the david loves and colin's them. hot anyway put them on david was like yeah also ooh. if you want to get your thirst trap on colin is hot um, so he's an attractive man but we should get we should get moving um i would definitely yes, do him carol. for more sheets um all right yeah. carol after I just said giggle, so lickety split, so we Carol. have a yeah we got our uh, well our, our uh, the guy we love to hate actually I would just wish he would go away and I wouldn't have to think about him ever again. That's Will you have your chance in November? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, I killed your song, but yes, Carol has a theme song ready to go for us. And it feels so good. Okay. Special counsel, Jack Smith. Jack Jack Smith for the win, man. Not even going to lie. He did that. He's like, he can keep a secret. (laughs) (laughs) Special counsel, Jack Smith, Tuesday announced that a grand jury had reindicted former President Donald Trump on four charges related to his January 6, 2021 coup attempt to honor the direction given by the U.S. Supreme Court in its July ruling holding that Trump was immune from criminal prosecution for official acts. So yeah, we had to go back and tailor the ruling to be like, no, this might be an official act. No, then it's just this, you know, we have enough just on uh, the clearly not official acts to yeah. vote. So judge Chuken, 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 Chuken. Tanya That's Chuken. what happens when you crime so much. You know, we'll find something. Don't worry. You definitely did something. Uh, And you know what's so funny is that he took out a full page ad saying that the exonerated five should stay locked up because even if they didn't do the Central Park rape and beating, they did something. How's that working out, Trump? Because you may not have done this and you might have immunity for that. But yeah, you definitely I've never did seen something. I've never seen anyone with a more incredible streak of saying some shit about someone else that actually applies to them. Yes, bananas. right. 
Somebody yeah. should take a full page ad out on Trump. <laughs> uh, next up. Uh, Many continue. people have. So, yeah, uh, Judge Tanya Chukin, who's overseeing the case, wrote uh, in a separate filing, quote, Today, a federal grand jury in the District of Columbia returned a superseding indictment. The superseding indictment, which was presented to a new grand jury that had not previously heard evidence in this case, reflects the government's effort to respect and implement the Supreme Court's holdings. Yes, we wouldn't want to disrespect the Supreme Court. And um, just so you know, the quote has ended. Um, (laughs) She didn't say that last part about disrespecting the Supreme Court. It sounds like it was implied, but... Uh, yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I'm glad be he's, okay, been charged. he's been charged for more shit. Yeah, sorry, well, it's really this the same. This is the part shit. where I eat my snack. And it's totally fine. Like, Crunch away, munch away. Um, <laughs> I had some chicken croquettes earlier, so I'm I'm pretty good in the snack department. But yes, uh, uh after that, in uh. Court filing by special counsel's office. Trump responded to the unsealing of the indictment on Truth Social and obviously as per the usual of the range rant saying, quote. So are you going to do the honor? Hillary Clinton. Hillary. Hillary. You know what? I forgot my Trump impersonation. <laughs> and then in a while, Hillary, Hillary Clinton uh, in an effort to resurrect the dead witch hunt in Washington, D.C., in an act of desperate, act of desperation and in order to save face, the illegally appointed special counsel deranged Jack Smith has brought a ridiculous new indictment against me. Yeah. Which- <laughs> it's such a long quote. I started looking at it. And I was like, I don't know. This is super. Yeah, I'm good. Which is all the problems of the old indictment. It should be just should, maybe we should just read it as a whiny baby as it should be read. I mean, it should be dismissed accurate. immediately. It's <laughs> The document hoax case has been completely dismissed. This is merely an attempt to interfere with the election and distract the American people from the catastrophes. Catastrophes. Kamala Harris has inflicted on our nation, it, like the border invasion, migrant crime, rampant inflation, and the threat of World War Three and uh, more. And he probably yeah. pronounced it I, I, I. World War I I I. <laughs> it's a catastrophe. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's my guy. It's oh. a catastroph- catastrophe. Catastrophe. That's how he says it. I know it is. Yeah, so, if, <laughs> like, obviously, um, you know. I thought I it was going to say catastrophic. <laughs> I expected Jack Smith and special counsel's office to edit the indictment to maybe pare it down or remove some of the information that pertained to, like, his, Trump's conversations with DOJ and um executive branch officials but that's not what they did and they took a completely i mean it's not totally surprising i heard suggested that it'd be a possibility of a superseding indictment um and what they did here first of all they impaneled a new grand jury to rehear the evidence sends the evidence uh, that would have been ruled out by the supreme court and i think that was a fairly fairly smart decision in terms of making the trial appear appeal proof should we ever get to that point uh, because it takes it takes away the argument that the jury's been corrupted by evidence that they shouldn't have heard uh, okay. i.e. Yeah. Trump's conversations with Jeffrey Clark and such so that was probably a good move um, also it's you always want to diversify your verdicts <laughs> also it's noteworthy that the four original charges still remain just that the evidence that they plan to present at this point differs slightly thanks to the Supreme Court ruling. And the Supreme Court did really go out of their way to try and make sure that they sabotage this case, not in terms of making the indictment and the trial go away, but making it difficult to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt by making it nearly impossible to use any evidence from either, uh, you know, Trump doing his job, quote unquote, or any public statements uh, i.e. like his his Twitter account, uh, like taking away the presidential the, one or his it doesn't his matter real Donald Trump because yeah. he never used the presidential one. And it, it should seem that tweeting from it's kind of bullshit if like tweeting from his personal account just because he's wildly unprofessional makes it an official act. Yeah, that, unfortunately, that's what the Supreme Court ruled. And that's why I said they went out of their way here. Um, I'm going to tell my boss that the Supreme Court says I can be on Twitter at work as much as I want because it's an official act. Well, as soon as you're elected president, you have 
<laughs> like have a, have a good time with that. Yeah, um, I realize this doesn't apply to my situation. No, <laughs> <laughs> but also it was interesting that they the DOJ didn't drop any of the charges. Um, they reissued them in a new indictment, which means they're fairly confident that even you know with the limitations placed on what they were able to argue in court, they still feel fairly confident they can prove all the charges. And I personally thought Trump was undercharged, but that's a story for, I just like, there is a prosecutorial strategy. Like it's a, it can be a double-edged sword if you undercharge or overcharge. Cause like, you know, you don't undercharge and there's some reasonable doubt. It's hard that you can't go back, dig in the bag, get more charges. If you overcharge, sometimes like when it comes to the jury, it's it's too much for them to wrap their heads around and you could end up creating doubt that way. But also what's interesting is that in this current version of the indictment, they re- removed any references to Trump in his time in office. Uh, when the initial indictment started out with, you know, Trump was the 45th president of the United States, blah, blah, blah. Uh, They replaced all that language and uh, changed it to like Trump was a candidate for the 2020 election. Uh, So they're clearly making a delineation between, um, you know, Trump's official duties, his, his office uh, in the white house. And now they're just solely honing in on the fact that he was acting as a candidate for the 2020 election and all of their legal activity that he gauged in leading up to January 6th. And it also removed any references again to Jeffrey Clark and any of Trump's communications with executive branch officials. Now, what's interesting is uh, the information regarding Mike Pence that was in the original indictment is also president or also present in, in this version of the indictment as Mike mm-hmm. Pence was acting as and the president of the Senate, which is not an executive branch official, uh, <laughs> executive branch office, and that's a clear delineation in his role as vice president, uh, doing his official duties as an um, executive officer versus a legislative legislative officer in this case. And I feel like <laughs> DOJ must have been looking squarely at the ruling the Supreme Court made and trying to figure out any loopholes they could possibly could to get as much evidence in as possible. And obviously, this does set the trial back on track in terms of eventually happening. But before the 2024 election, it's impossible. we got like 70 days left. It's just they ran out the clock. The Supreme Court it did what it wanted to do, got the job done in terms of delaying Trump's trial. And to be honest, um, they're going to have to litigate, a, uh, you know, numerous instances of evidence that they want to present at the trial um, in pretrial motions and such. And like at any point, if Trump doesn't like the ruling by judge Chuck in on any number of issues, he can likely appeal it up to the Supreme Court and they could just take it up again, delay the trial even further. It could be this infinite loop of delay. Uh, But yeah. So luckily we have hopefully this other option of not voting for him in the presidential election that's upcoming. Um, That would be perfect because that would really help the chances of maybe him seeking, uh, of of seeking, leveling justice upon his head. Yeah, fingers crossed we can make that happen. In a non-threatening way, if the Secret (laughs) Service even does their job anymore. Right. If the 2020 election, you know, voting him out of office was getting the ball rolling towards getting him indictment, then the 2024 election and keeping him out of office is the key to making sure he faces the conviction and trial, even though he's already been convicted and won, but no one really cares anymore. Apparently, I guess like a felon running for president, not that big of a news story. whoop de doo what can you do? Um, also noteworthy, I think, is the idea, and we talked about this on the uh, previous podcast momentarily. So DOJ has this policy. It's not like a, a rule, but just kind of a guideline that 60 days before an election, they won't take any overt acts that they believe could interfere with a, you know, any kind of election, uh, 
we're like 69 days away. So we've got about nine more days on the clock for DOJ to take any action against any of Trump's co-conspirators. So in terms of DOJ uh, issuing the superseding indictment, it's noteworthy about Trump's co-conspirators. It could mean like, you know, one of any number of things, but I personally don't think it's possible or even plausible that DOJ is going to issue new charges against co-conspirators until at the very least after the election. But Hmm. um, it's possible that the investigation isn't finished and like they just, don't have enough evidence yet for multiple, you know, indictments of members of Congress and um, the people at the, um, the war rooms on January 6th, uh, the fake elector plot, et cetera. I don't think that's totally likely, but I I guess it's plausible. Um, It could just be that um, they want to focus on Trump right now and get this squared away uh, before they indict anyone else. If they're going to, because like that could literally just add more years to the clock with multiple co-defendants uh, in their pretrial motion practice. Um, but so you might, think this might be an act out of expedience to get him charged with get uh, something going more before the election? Uh, yeah. Well, I think they're going to try and move as fast as possible with this, but like the idea that it's going to take place, that this trial of Trump's going to take place before the election. That's that's a wrap. It's over with. That's done. So. But uh, no, but when they, they could start scheduling it. Yeah, know? oh yeah, they're gonna try and, and move as much of the like their scheduling and motion practice up as quickly as possible. Um, but we know that they were aiming to like streamline this indictment because of the way Trump was indicted, the language, um, and also the fact that again they listed numerous co-conspirators, but none of those co-conspirators were actually indicted. So, I mean, they attempted to make this as streamlined as possible, but I had been hinting like for months and months and months after the indictment, like, hey, man, like this could go to trial, but the Supreme Court definitely can find a way to stop in, uh, like stop this thing, delay it, throw it off the tracks. And that's exactly what they did. I mean, it's just, you know, unfortunate that we have a bunch of Trump's cronies appointed to the Supreme Court to step in and play defense counsel in his favor, but that's the world we live in. You don't like it. Your options are vote for Kamala Harris. And then when they retire, she'll have the opportunity to fill, uh, fill their positions, get them dudes up out of there. I mean, look, I think one of the biggest mistakes, uh, Jack Smith, special counsel, the whole office has made, (laughs) is they didn't issue a subpoena for Jeannie Thomas um, for her communications with any Trump campaign officials and all of the multiple uh, state yeah, legislators. Yeah, I, I just don't understand or agree with all the decorum that's been used to, like, preserve some bullshit, like, appearances. Yeah. I don't know. We've, we didn't we've, have time for a farce. Like, that wasn't what our – that's not what we need in, as a society. No, not taking her seriously and not issuing some kind of subpoena and let them know that her and Clarence Thomas were on the radar. It basically gave carte blanche to the Republicans on the Supreme Court to just go bananas because they're like, well, who's going to stop us? And that would have like, it's entirely possible if they had got this done earlier where they had Jeannie Thomas in the crosshairs uh, for her role in the 2016 coup that the Supreme Court ruling would have turned out different. Uh, It's entirely possible that that um, Colorado court decision to kick Trump off the ballot uh, for attempting to overthrow the government would have stood. Like, it's a whole lot of things that could have been solved, likely, in one fell swoop if they had just, like, (laughs) just, like, had some fucking balls. I mean, I say have some fucking balls. They indicted a former president. It's never been done. So... I just, I just want to say I'm not like totally criticizing Jack Smith or Mayor Garland or the Department of Justice. It's not like they're not doing their jobs, but like you got to, <laughs> you can't play chess with someone who's willing to burn the board. Now, is it really cold or are they burning it out of spite? <laughs> sorry, sorry. 